Let's be honest here, whatever you say about Samsung's Android software today, it spent most of the past decade being pretty rough. During the dark days of the Samsung TouchWiz UI, it was a chaotic mess visually with obnoxious sound effects sure to infuriate friends, family and passers-by alike. It was often laggy in terms of its performance, and good luck getting your one Android version update within six months of it launching. But today things are different. Samsung supports its phones for just as long as Google, its ecosystem is vast, its feature set is formidable, and its phones generally run well and look decent. In fact, between all those various angles, you could argue that Samsung has the best Android software overall of any Android brand. So that's the case I'm going to make today, looking at everything from multitasking to foldables to customizability. Take a sec to subscribe to XDA TV and we'll get into it. As recently as 2016, if you've bought a Samsung phone the previous year, you'd need to wait until the next model launched before you get the next version of Android. Selling new phones came first at the cost of keeping current models up to date. These days, everyone in the Android world is doing better when it comes to those platform updates, but current Samsung flagships are leading the way with five years of security patches and four generations of major Android version updates. That means that current models like the S22 and Flip 4, having launched in 2022, will be supported all the way up to Android 16 in 2025 or 2026. That's longer than Google's Pixel 6 series, which launched just a few months earlier than the S22, and on par with the Pixel 7, which arrived eight months later already running Android 13. Working out exactly who's ahead between Samsung and Google is a little tricky because Samsung counts the number of major platform updates you'll get, whereas with Google it's updates up to a particular date. But basically, if you buy a Galaxy S in early spring, it'll be supported for the same amount of time as the Google Pixel launches later in the year. That's impressive. It's true that other brands like OnePlus can be pretty quick with updating its flagships too, but the difference with Samsung is they haven't dragged their feet when it comes to updating mid-range models as well as the latest flagships. The Galaxy A53 started getting Android 13 in November or December of 2022, depending on your region, whereas the OnePlus Nord line has only just started to receive Android 13 now. Plus, OnePlus lags behind with those arguably far more important Android security patches. Though not as sexy as a big splashy upgrade with new features to play with, they're just as important in keeping your phone safe from the bad guys. Samsung's generally very punctual in pushing out security patches, sometimes even beating Google to the punch. OnePlus and many others still only manage to push them out on a bi-monthly basis. Samsung was the first big brand to add split-screen multitasking to its phones way back in 2012, and it's continued to build on those foundations over the past decade. The result is one of the best multitasking systems on any phone. All Samsung phones now offer not just multi-window, but a robust windowed multitasking system too, plus Samsung Labs features to force stubborn apps to behave in windowed mode. There's now a nifty three-finger swipe gesture to activate multi-window so you don't need to fumble around with the recent apps menu, and app pairs can be saved to the Edge panel for easier access. When you are in multi-window mode, Samsung hides the status bar to free up space. There's a handy control bar here to quickly hop into other multitasking modes or change the app in each half of the screen. And you can even open multiple instances of certain apps like Google Chrome. These are all features you won't find in stock Android split screen mode. The pop-up view mode is just as fully featured with this gesture shortcut to quickly hop into a window and this menu bar to expand to full screen, go split screen or minimize your app into a floating button. You can stack multiple windowed apps together if you want to keep the main screen clutter free and also add translucency so it's easy to see the content from both a foreground and background app. All of which adds up to, in my opinion, the best multitasking setup in any smartphone. But if you own a foldable, especially a larger one, Samsung's One UI brings even more to the table. It hasn't always been smooth sailing for Samsung and foldable phones. The first Galaxy Fold in 2019 literally kicked off with an embarrassing multi-month delay while the company worked to fix durability problems with the screen. There was a prominent issue with the internal screen spontaneously cracking that had folks recalling the then quite recent memory of the Galaxy Note 7. What's more, you could definitely argue that Samsung has coasted a little bit this past year in terms of its foldable hardware, with the current flip and fold being bulkier than the latest models from Honor and Xiaomi with larger hinge gaps. The latest models are iterative updates to be sure. But one advantage of Samsung being first to foldables is it's had more time than anyone else to figure out the perfect software experience with this form factor. And what we have right now on the Fold 4 is, I think, pretty far ahead of everyone else. A large part of that is thanks to Android 12L's new taskbar, which is included in One UI on foldables as of version 4.1.1. It can be expanded to allow you to easily hop between apps in full screen or collapse for a bigger canvas for your content. Up to three apps are supported on screen at a time, plus a whole bunch of floating windows. And just like regular multi-window on a phone, you can save app pairs to easily hop between combinations of apps. Once again, Samsung Labs can help you force apps to play nicely with window mode if they don't do that automatically. Meanwhile, on the extra tall screen of the Flip, Flex Mode opens up yet more possibilities. 
Certain apps like YouTube have their own custom layout when the phone is half opened, or the flex mode panel can help you fill out the lower portion of the screen with a trackpad and other handy controls. Apple, of course, is the king of ecosystems, and in using an iPhone, it's very easy to get tempted over time into picking up an Apple Watch or AirPods or whatever else, which of course keeps you locked into that ecosystem. On the Samsung side, their ecosystem isn't as overt as Apple's, but it's still full of plenty of neat stuff. Samsung smartwatches will pair with any Android phone, but work best with the Galaxy, and other accessories like the Galaxy Smart Tag, Samsung's answer to AirTags, only works with a Samsung phone. This works with SmartThings, Samsung's smart home ecosystem, and outside of Google or Apple, Samsung is probably the only company capable of having its own large-scale object tracking product like this. The thing is huge for peace of mind if you're traveling with luggage, and I've used it on just about every trip I've taken lately, big or small. Meanwhile, Bixby routines are a highly powerful yet often underutilized way to automate stuff on your phone. It's like having IFTTT or Tasker built into your device with top level access to all your stuff. And the new power profile settings introduced in One UI 5 for foldables and likely coming to other devices in version 5.1 mean you can set your phone to use less power while still allowing all your apps to sync in the background. This light power profile is something I'd like to see in every phone. Out of the box, One UI 5 is already highly customizable, benefiting from Google's Material U design language and wallpaper color theming. And in the latest version, Samsung has uh, taken some inspiration from a couple of recent iOS feature additions, namely widget stacks and lock screen customization. There's no denying the iPhone copycat nature of these features, but it's still nice to have this added functionality. The visual side of One UI is always going to be at least somewhat defined by Google. That's the nature of the Android world. But lately, Samsung has been offering some less opinionated, more neutral takes on Material U compared to many other manufacturers. You're a bit more free to customize One UI to your liking, whereas with a Pixel, that Google design language is always going to shine through. But the real hidden gem of Samsung customization is good luck. If you haven't come across this before, then prepare to be amazed. It's a candy store of customizations and tweaks that can affect pretty much any part of the device, whether it's visual or functional. Think of these as experimental tweaks to One UI that Samsung lets you download to take your customization to the next level. Theme Park lets you create your own truly custom theme for One UI, and other good luck elements let you tweak the way the back gesture works for easier app swapping, or make tweaks to multitasking, for example, disabling the way One UI normally minimizes all windowed apps when you go home. That's to name just a few. Good luck really deserves a video of its own, so let us know down in the comments if that's something you want to see. Either way, if you've thought of it, chances are it's an option somewhere in Good Lock, and that's something that no other manufacturer can offer. Samsung software has come a long way since the bloops and whistles of the Galaxy S3 and S4. Back in the early days, Samsung was content throwing stuff at a wall and seeing what stuck. Those phones were feature-rich, but so many of those features were, to put it bluntly, crap. Stuff you'd never want to use that was barely at the level of a tech demo. One UI today has some of the best multitasking and foldable features around, excellent customization options, and it's backed up by a really solid ecosystem. That's tough to match, even for Google and larger Chinese brands like Xiaomi, Oppo, and Honor. If you're a Galaxy phone owner, then hit the comments to let us know how you're liking One UI 5 so far. If you think Samsung has the best Android software, or if there are still things you'd like to see improved, subscribe to XDA for more coverage of the Galaxy S23 series coming soon. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.